Um, I'm going to start with you, Chef AJ. Uh, you know, a, a little bit, a little bit of what we were talking about before, um, which is, um, how how do you get started on a plant based diet? How or how do you how do you bring people along? And uh, you you answer that question, but I think that's a great start for this topic on plant based diets. Well, well, for me, you know, I'm not a doctor, so I can't right. convince them with the science. I mean, I could recommend the science. I just do it with delicious food. And you know, I did it for many years in Los Angeles as a pastry chef. It wasn't even a vegan restaurant, but all my desserts were vegan, sweetened with dates without oil or salt. But they 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 stood the test of time because they were delicious. So I just do it with the food. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. So uh, Dr. Nagra, how would you suggest coming from a more uh, science-based perspective to uh, to get people to go to a plant-based diet? And I believe you are muted. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Um, so, I mean, it, it really depends on what their concerns are. Normally when people are looking at plant-based nutrition, there, there's some sort of motivator there. You know, maybe they're interested in the environmental aspect. Maybe they're um, interested in the animal rights side. And I talked about this in my talk a bit earlier, um, or maybe they have heard about some of the health benefits, but they have some questions or concerns. So it'll be different for each person. I typically ask them, well, what are your concerns? What is motivating you? And I'll share the science related to that topic. Um, just kind of jumping off what AJ said too, around you know, sharing delicious food. Um, one thing that I do with a lot of my patients is um, I'll look at what they already eat. Right. So we'll review their diet. We'll see what they already eat. And I'll see what are little things we can change. You know, if they're having, you know, meat sauce in their, in their pasta, you know, beef sauce, maybe we swap that for lentils into the pasta. You know, it's a similar overall kind of recipe, similar flavor, similar type of food. Um, but obviously a, a healthier option and, and, you know, shift towards a more plant-based option. So, um, so it's a, it kind of depends on the individual. Thank you. Chef AJ, so along those lines, what would be, what do you find when you're, when you're working with somebody are the easier things to introduce or to, to swap out? Dessert. Um, <laughs> I, dessert. Just, okay. I, I just want to point out John McDougal has just typed in the chat that McDougal is here. I don't know if anyone saw that, but I, you know, I, I, okay. So here's the thing, you know, people that are hardcore, you know, junk food junkies that are eating a McDonald's, you know, I've never tasted the beyond burger or the impossible burger. So I can't vouch for whether it tastes as good or the same. But when I make a German chocolate cake, you can't tell that it doesn't have eggs, that it doesn't have dairy, that it doesn't have oil, that it doesn't have butter. And so, so that is very familiar. They just know they're eating a delicious cake. Not everybody can step into this and love tofu and tempeh and seitan immediately. But like Dr. Niagara said, if it's familiar, you know, I mean, let, you know, when you make taco meat out of walnuts or lentils and you use the right spices, you don't know that you're not eating meat. You don't even have to go to the fake new stuff like the beyond this and the impossible that, but I like to hit them over the head with dessert. <laughs> okay. Um, that, that sounds like a great start for sure. So I actually, I'd like to try that, that chocolate muse that you made earlier today. So um, real quick, a uh, question for you, uh, Dr. Nagra. What should our blood type be? Excuse me, our blood sugar level be ideally. And uh, we're gonna have my, we're gonna have Dr. McDougall on, and do um, so he'll have you know an opinion on this. Um, do potatoes, sweet potatoes, and stuff like that contribute to having a higher blood sugar than desired? He's muted. Yeah, hold on one second here. Let me make sure that. You are unmuted. Not sure how that okay. happened. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, no, no, I muted myself so I wouldn't you wouldn't hear anything while while AJ was speaking, but I won't do that now because then I can't unmute. Um okay. so yeah, so that question actually came up during my talk too. Now in the Canadian, uh like we use millimoles per liter up here and the the fasting levels you want them to be between 3.9 and 5.6 millimoles per liter. For um in America, that translates to I believe 70 milligrams per deciliter to 100 milligrams per deciliter. That's what's considered the kind of normal healthy range. You don't want to be above that uh, in a fasting state. You also don't want to dip too far below that because you can be hypoglycemic, you could pass out, you can be really dangerous. Um, now, if you're talking about uh, post meal, I mean, you can go quite a bit higher. You can double that range after a meal because it's supposed to just be temporary. Your blood sugar rises after you eat some carbohydrates and then your body takes care of it and they drop right back down to baseline. Um, in cases where you have insulin resistance, um, so say prediabetes or, or diabetes, then yeah, it can remain elevated and that's a problem. But I would, I would hesitate to 
to you know tell anyone that that we need to be focusing too much on those short term spikes because I'm seeing that a lot now online uh, where people are trying to flatline their blood glucose, but then they end up eating things that are way less healthy. They're eating you know things like the butter and meat and whatever that are low in carbohydrates that maybe aren't going to spike blood sugar so much after a meal when that's a normal response. Um, and they end up doing themselves a disservice in the long run. Welcome, Dr. McDougall. Nice you guys to wait for me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> be, thanks. So um, actually, so I, I asked a question before you got here um, about blood sugar. So we're just going to jump right in, but uh, I wanted to thank you. It's, it's an honor to, uh, to talk to you and, uh, and have you on the panel. So um, I, I was mentioning blood sugar and asking about um, various, um, various products or pro various foods, such as potatoes and, and, and starches like that. I know how you feel about, uh, about potatoes. What, what is your thought on, on, on the healthy level for blood sugar? And are there plants such as potatoes that, that contribute to unhealthy levels? Well, it depends on who you're listening to. Uh, when I first started medicine back 50 plus years ago, uh, a normal blood sugar was uh, considered below 200. And the marketplace wasn't very big with people with blood sugars over 200. Then the drug companies, uh, they think they can improve their business by increasing the market. And the way they did it, as they said, on normal blood sugar was above, it was below 160. And, and the next number that came out, it was 140 milligrams per deciliter. And as long as you were uh, below 140 milligrams per deciliter, you were not a diabetic. Now it's 126 milligrams per deciliter. That's the official number. What is a normal blood sugar? Well, you know, I, I know, I know people that run blood sugars of 40, 60, we're talking about without medication. And I would say you're probably looking at a, a range of somewhere between 70 and 110. Most people who are, I would consider normal would run that kind of level, but you know, people are fascinated to put blood sugar levels. They pay a lot of attention to them and they try and make them normal with medications and what they should be doing. Because I have never seen a patient die of a high blood sugar. I've been at this business for you know, over a half a century. I have never seen sugar, nor high cholesterol, nor high blood pressure. What do they die of? They have rotten tissues, bad arteries. So we're looking at the wrong problem. We're looking at the signs of really serious illnesses, which are due to the food. And, you know, as long as you keep looking at signs and you have medications that make signs go away, good grief, I'm a real doctor. I can, I can make your cholesterol 30. I can even make your blood pressure, you know, 50 over 20. I'm a doctor. I get a prescription pad. As long as we focus our attention on numbers like blood sugar and pills to fix the blood sugar, that's all we're going to get. There's low blood sugar is taking a lot of pills. We're never going to get healthy people. You've got to focus on the problem. <music>